Okay, um, we've got a, a lot of new people on the call today. Um, great to see so many uh, new faces and new names. Um, obviously, Roots is of interest to lots of you. Um, so before we jump into the discussion of the proposal, um, I was just wondering if we could quickly go around so everyone can each introduce themselves, uh, just say uh, your name and which uh, organization you're from. Um, because we've got one person who's on the phone, so we can't necessarily see everybody who's here. Um, so I think it was uh, David on the phone. Do you want to uh, introduce yourself first? Yeah, I've actually joined, so I'm watching now as well. Okay. Um, I'm okay. I, I'm from Walking UK. Um, I am B from British Cycling. I am Dave from Trainers One. I'm Chris from Race Valley. Hi. Um, Nick from the Open Data Institute, and I'm in. Uh, okay, Nick Smith, do you want to introduce yourself? No, uh, Catherine? Uh, we'll try Sean then. Silence. Okay. Uh, maybe a few of you are having microphone issues. Um, okay, so we've got, uh, I'll just introduce people that I know. So uh, Catherine Joan is our intern, has just joined the Open Active team. Uh, we've also got Sean Radford on the call as well. Um, so in the purposes of time, I'm, I'm going to uh, move on with the call. Um, I'll share my screen. I usually prepare some slides for the call just to help guide us through the discussion. Um, so because we've got a few new people today, I just wanted to put a bit of context to what these calls are all about. Um, so Nick, can you just let me know if you can see the slides okay? So. I'm sharing properly. Yeah, it looks good. Great, okay. Thanks. So these, um, these are our fortnightly uh, calls of the community group who are uh, collaborating on building the uh, data standards for the Open Active project. So um, we run them every two weeks. Uh, the topics vary uh, depending on what the focus of our work is at any, at any point in time. Um, and that's largely driven by the feedback and needs that we hear from the community. So at the moment, we're working through um, a number of um, updates to our specifications in parallel. We're working on some uh, uh, open booking API. Um, we're working on a revision to our uh, main data model specification, which we might uh, get to depending on how quickly we move through the call, um, uh, and as well as discussing a number of other um, uh, proposed changes and building some tools to help uh, people with publishing their data. Um, if you um, are not aware of it, that we coordinate this work through a W3C community group, um, which you can Google, and I'll also share these slides afterwards, um, both to our uh, community group mailing list, um, which is the right place to come to kind of uh, follow along with what we're doing but I'll also ask the engagement team to um, share with uh, those of you um, who they've invited directly today. Um, we're doing all of our work in the open. We have um, uh, open processes, open governance that um, helps uh, build standards that should hopefully be useful to the whole community. Um, you can, you're welcome to come along and uh, join these calls to contribute on GitHub, leave uh, comments on, our, on the issues and proposals that we raise um, but it would be great if your, uh, you or your organization can come and formally join the community group as well. It's a relatively straightforward process of just kind of joining, signing up on the W3 site uh, and 
uh, joining the group. So um, the agenda for today, um, I wanted to kind of focus the majority of the time on the roots proposal, because um, I think that's, uh, I think most of you are here to actually discuss that. Uh, also um, do a, a quick uh, show and tell around the data validator that we're working on, uh, that we'd like to get some uh, feedback on from a, a user point of view. Um, and then depending on time, uh, we can go through um, uh, an update on where we are with uh, the data model revisions. So um, to, to get stuck into the roots discussion, um, I'm hoping that uh, to hear from all of you around your requirements today. Um, what I'm going to do is just quickly re review uh, uh, the scope of the proposal that we've put uh, together so far. Um, so <clears throat> The, the initial focus of the data model that we've been working on um, has been to support the publication of um, opportunities to participate in events and opportunities to um, uh, book and use uh, facilities. Um, but we're aware that there are other types of uh, opportunity to be active, including um, going out, walking, running, cycling on um, routes. Um, uh, you know, around, around the country. Uh, they might be uh, formally, you know, formally designated uh, routes or it might be routes that uh, the community is uh, sharing with one another. So um, based on the, the feedback we've had from some of the startups and some of the um, engagement work that we've had uh, ongoing over the last few months, it's become clear that there's a number of people um, who are interested in um, having better access to open data about routes. Um, so to try and move this forward and get the data model updated to uh, accommodate that, um, I drafted an initial proposal, um, which um, is, well, for those of you who can see, um, is linked from the URL uh, below. Um, and you, obviously when you get the slides, you can dig into it. Um, but it's a GitHub issue. We have a standard template for our proposals where we um, uh, discuss uh, what the basic requirements are um, and look at example data so that we can have a useful discussion around it. Um, so the, the approach that um, I'm proposing to get the, the first uh, support in for Roots um, is to try and focus on the, the most basic use case initially. Um, and this is in line with what we've been doing um, with other aspects of the data model. Um, so um, we know that there will be a, a variety of, of more advanced requirements around uh, not just routes but also events uh, and use of facilities. Um, but what we're trying to do is uh, generally is take the approach where we identify the kind of minimum data model in order to enable people to start publishing data and then use that to then um, start addressing more complex use cases. So we've been guided by the data that we know that people have already or are collecting already, and then expanding that out based on how people um, develop and improve their systems or as uh, we get new requirements in. So the proposal at the moment only covers um, a, a use case of publication and discovery of routes. So some basic metadata about um, a route, where the starting point is and um, uh, what the route looks like in terms of a, uh, you know, a geospatial kind of line or uh, polygon. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't uh, address some of the more advanced requirements, um, which, I, which we've been having some discussion around, on the GitHub issue around. Um, so, so far, I, I, I'll, I'll talk through what the, the basic use case looks at the moment, but so far I haven't had anyone disagree with the content of the, the basic proposal most of the discussion seems to be around some of these more advanced requirements. So being able to segment routes uh, and describe sections of the route, perhaps in terms of um, a different difficulty, uh, grade, uh, surface, um, the need to uh, add uh, information about entry points onto routes, uh, undulations over the, the course, uh, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> so, I think those are things that we, well, so I suppose my proposal is that those are things that we, we work towards 
after uh, doing some initial revisions to support the, the more basic kind of uh, metadata publication. Um, <clears throat> So I'll, I'll just quickly summarize what I think the root proposal is and then I'll ask people for, for feedback. So um, what I'm proposing is that we add a new type to the data model, uh, which is root, um, which is the, uh, the object that we use to capture, sorry, to describe um, any type of root, whether it's for walking, cycling or running. Um, we already have um, quite a rich set of uh, properties in the data model for describing uh, a whole variety of different things, um, different, sorry, different aspects of events, facilities, uh, and these will apply to routes as well. So we can um, already have a, a title or a name for a route description. We can attach imagery to it. We can categorize them you know, based on, um, say, uh, wheelchair suitability. Um, we can attach uh, a level. <coughs> So some difficulty indicator, and also indicate what type or types of activity it's suitable for. Um, <clears throat> we, uh, as part of our, our data model, we're drawing quite heavily on uh, schema.org, which is an existing standard that's being developed um, by a broader community, including Google. Um, they already have a few. They already have a few uh, features uh, which are relevant here. Um, so in particular, they have a geo shape type, which can be used to um, describe uh, a line, so uh, uh, or a polygon um, for a kind of circular route, for example. So I'm, I'm proposing that what we do is um, attach geo shape information to this new route type. So together, that would give us a way to say um, there is a named uh, route, provide description, uh, uh, indicate what type of activity it's suitable for, and then also publish um, a, uh, some geospatial data, which could be a geojson file, it could be a GPX trace, depending on what people have. Um, so I think that could cover uh, these core uh, use cases. Um, <clears throat> there's some additional metadata that I've noticed that are in use on, on a couple of sites. Um, so, for example, separately identifying the starting point for a route, separate to the actual track, um, and then starting to provide at least some high-level metadata that might help people make decision about whether they want to uh, follow that route. So the distance, um, uh, the kind of estimated duration, perhaps some indication of the kind of elevation change over the course of the route. Um, but this is where it starts to kind of uh, get into some of these more detailed uh, discussions that um, have been raised on the mailing list. Um, so any any thoughts from anyone on uh, that point so far? Just jump in if you've got something to say. I, I don't know whether you're going to move on to it, Lee, but uh, there's been various bits of conversation at the tail end of the, um, uh, the discussion on GitHub about sort of easy versus hard and sort of qualitative indicators as opposed to quantitative ones of, of the, the roots. Um, so I think that's certainly worth a <coughs> discussion here. I uh, wasn't sure whether you're going to get to that a little bit further in the conversation or, or what you want to do with that. Yeah, so, uh, that's, that's a great point. So um, within the, the, this, this uh, notion of attaching uh, kind of difficulty is not specific to roots. Um, it comes up with other um, other types of opportunities as well. So, you know, is a class designed for um, beginners or experts, for example. So at the moment in the data model, we have a property called level, which indicates the kind of level of, um, you know, experience uh, for, uh, the, uh, you know, an event or, or potentially a route uh, is suitable for. But what we haven't done is standardize the values for that um, because we see that there's, there's probably a lot of different type. There could be a lot of different ways that people want to classify things. So at the moment, um, we allow, or sorry, from the 2.0 specification, we'll be saying to people, those can, um, when you publish a level, you can indicate that it's coming from a controlled vocabulary um, to allow the community to kind of have some discussion about what those levels are, but without requiring everybody to agree on, on what they are uh, in advance, if that makes sense. Do, do you think that, as you say, it's controlled vocabulary, do you think there should be some 
requirement to be able to, for instance, if there's a level categorization, to go off to their schema and find a description from the organization that's giving it. So basically, it's a level category in their schema. So if I'm uh, a member of the British Ironman Foundation and I'm putting out a level of difficulty for a route, um, that my classification of what a difficult route might entail would be probably death to anybody normal who'd want to try and try and attempt it. Um, but some some sort of uh, way of <clears throat> uh, associating who's rating it with what the rating is, as well as uh, possibly extending the rating to a description. So if you wanted to, you could explore further what they mean by it. Yeah, so there's, um, there's some support for that in the, um, uh, in the data model that we're using to publish some of these uh, control vocabularies. So we're, we're using a, an existing standard called uh, SCOS, which comes from the library community. Um, and in that, um, you can indicate that it's uh, a, an organization is publishing a control set of values. You can provide those values and um, put some notes or description against them to give that kind of qualification that you were, um, you were suggesting would be useful. Um, and then in the roots information, you will be able to say, we're using level as defined in this, um, this control set of vocabularies, which will be coming from um, you know, uh, whichever organization you want to reference. Uh, and do you think level should be uh, um, an atomic property or should it be able to actually have uh, uh, over time I can just sort of see a particular route gaining beyond its ownership what's what other people think it is and potentially the ramblers would take a, a walking level of a route around a particular place and you know the, the running guys would have a different set of qualifications for exactly route but done as a running activity uh, so uh, that's interesting um, so at the moment I'm not aware that anyone is publishing that, that different publishers are publishing the same in, uh, di sorry let me start again I'm not aware that anyone is publishing information about the same thing from different sources um, within the data model at the moment, we ask for a unique identifier for, um, for, a, well, for in this case, for a route. It's, it's possible that multiple publishers could provide some data about the same route using the same identifier, um, which would mean that data consumers could um, uh, take on these different viewpoints. Um, but I think that's a pattern that we'd have to document. It's just not, I, think, I don't think it's that common at the moment. I just chip in, it's David here. Um, can you hear me okay? Um, with, with the roots, are the roots going to be, do you envision that the roots will be published uh, in the feed independently from, say, an activity? Um, if, if that's the case, then would the category be type of walking or cycling? And then there will be sub level based on the category, so there could be multiple levels depending on what category is selected? Um, not quite. The, the category that uh, is, is essentially just like a tag, it's just a way to um, add, uh, add additional qualifiers to an event or a route or um, some other Any object. Right. So would routes be published independently, are you? Is the idea of this? I'm, I'm, I'm new to, new to this. Yes, yeah. So I'm expecting that a publisher might just have a feed which is specifically roots. Um, they could mix their roots in with event data if they wanted to put it into one feed, but they could also just publish it separately. Yeah. So, so, so in theory, then the category could be a way of categorizing the type of route, depending um, on the that. Then have you could have different levels depending on the category. What I was trying to get at. Yeah, I think I so I put a couple examples in the um, in the proposal. So there, I was using the um, activity property to say this is a cycling route or walking route, and there could be multiple if it was a say a shared use path. And then category was things like dog friendly, wheelchair accessible, other kind of uh, tags or labels that you want to attach to the route. So in essence, for, for cars, you know, activity with walking category could be. Face to session or something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, does anybody else have any thoughts or comments on that on that basic proposal? I, I'm just uh, going back to the sort of uh, different publishers idea. Um, wonder whether uh, some of the ways that we've got sort of different people's uh, take on elements of the uh, information displayed. I wonder if there's some idea of a see also kind of approach to this so that um, if I had the Ramblers circular walk around Regent's Park, um, you could see also the cycling networks, cycle route around Regent's Park or whatever it happened to be. So there's a, there's a less of a hard association between them, but there was some, um, some hyperlink map route by which you could also uh, find other people's take on, on something on, it, on a similar thing. Um, yes, I, I think that that's um, that's all possible, and I think um, if I remember rightly, uh, schema.org has a similar as a C also already, so as a way to link to other other information that could be about the same same route or, or any other objects. I, I, I have a, a conceptual mapping question related to that, David. Um, on the um, so basically, how does how does this work with? So y you've got uh, sorry, it was Chris, wasn't it? Um, so you've got um, Facility use currently, which is a particular facility being used for a particular purpose. So that would be a tennis, that would be a sports hall being used for tennis. And we also have activities currently, which are uh, events, sorry, which are um, usually have a particular activity associated with them. So there is yoga happening at 7 p.m. Um, generally speaking, if there was also Zumba happening at 7 p.m., that would be a distinct activity. And if there was also um, a trampolining happening, in a sports hall, that would be a separate facility use. So we have this kind of separation between the activities and the um, uh, and the place where you can do them. So with routes, I'm just wondering if there's something implicit here about having is is a cycling route a distinct, different thing to a walking route? So um, the reason I say that is on the surface they look similar. The GPX file might be the same, so they might have the same track trail. But then as soon as you get into the descriptions and the, the deeper data around them, so as soon as you get into level or photos or uh, categories even, or maybe um, information about uh, the kind of where you meet or what's available on the route or I don't know, whatever else, um, then does that stuff mean that actually we're saying that a route maybe is a bit more specific than just the GPX data of there's a, you know, there's a, there's a lake here and you can go around the outside of it because that's what GPX shows you. Actually, the route is saying this is, there's something you can do here, and it's a cycle, and this is what that cycle looks like. And, and maybe we we should bake into this standard a little bit of a um, kind of a semantic that you don't get a cycling running route unless people are expected to both cycle and run at the same time. Maybe triathlon. Um, if it's a cycling route, and there's also a running, there's the ability to use it as a running route then potentially they're separate routes. Maybe they point to the same GPX file, but then we can describe them appropriately, label them appropriately, and people would turn up with either a bike or their trainers, and maybe not both. So, so in that case, do we, uh, similar to how you have an activity at a, a venue, you have an activity at a route, and that is a separate object, essentially, that refers to the route, so you can find the activities for a route, or you can, so you, you can do it, or you, for activities, you can find the routes for the activity you're looking to do. Well, I was almost suggesting that the route itself is for a particular activity, and so it would be a distinct route um, that you would, you would call it a separate route, even if it's the same GPX trail. So kind of almost separating the maybe I'm misusing the word route here, but um, separating the kind of the lat long coordinates of the trail, which is the kind of, I suppose you could say that's a route, um, from the kind of more well-described um, route, if you see what I mean. <clears throat> so you, you put the route down to being the geo shape or whatever it happens to be. Um, you'd call this route activity or something like that that makes it clear we're not we're not simply doing wayfinding here, we're doing what you do on this route. Absolutely, so exactly. So geo shape is geo shape, 
um, root isn't just extending GeoShape with a name because you could put, put that in the GeoShape. Uh, root is actually a, a lot more about the activity. Hmm. Would uh, that potentially allow multiple providers of activities or describers of activities to reference the same GeoShape more easily? So you've got think, the ramblers say, here's the GeoShape, here's all the stuff we have to say about it. The cyclists say something different want to say something again all the eight different running organizations describe it differently but it's all kind of the same geo shape here's metadata that describes it yeah yeah exactly it could work exactly that way and that's one of the reasons for pulling out that geo shape separate to the route itself to, to, to make it a distinct thing and i know we're currently deferring things like segments and such like but just overlapping slightly um that could be representative the triathlon might be here are the three geo shapes for the, the running, swimming, cycling routes, parts of this overall thing. So potentially when we go there, multiple geo shapes could be included in one descriptor to represent a composite activity. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that could work. Um, yeah, there's, a, I mean, triathlon specifically, there's already a composite problem with event because they want to represent running, swimming, cycling, three different aspects with the distance uh, for each. So yeah. I, I, this, this probably, yeah, there's, well, and, and I know we're bringing distance into roots, aren't we? So maybe that is the same thing. Feels like a moment for that. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to make sure that everyone on the call has a chance to, um, to, to chip in. So is anybody who hasn't had time, hasn't had a chance to speak yet, want to say anything? Um, okay. Um, just on the back on the, the thing I was mentioning before, we just back off the back of what Chris suggested. Um, are we saying that therefore root is still a, a, a good name or root activity? I know we talked about that. Do I mean do we think is it clearer enough that a root isn't just a described geo shape? A root is something a bit more than that. Um, or are we agreeing on that? Or what's where are we with that? Um, well, I, I think it would. To me, it seems like whether we allow an, a route to have more than one activity associated with it. Um, if, if a route only has one activity and then a at least one geo shape, then I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that route activity makes a is is a great name. I think when I see what I've seen when people are describing these on the web at the moment, it's a, they're publishing a route, and then sometimes there is a more detailed geospatial object associated with it. So it felt like there were those two, two distinct things. But they're usually publishing a route for a particular activity, presumably, or? Um, from what I've seen so far, but then that's because they're t tending to be, you know, it's, it's a walking website or it's a cycling website. Mm. So I, I, haven't, I haven't looked to see whether people are publishing information on kind of multi or kind of shared route information. I was, kind of, I was kind of thinking of things like um, for canals, if the route was, if you're publishing information about a towpath and how do you say it's shared use, would, would you expect there to be two routes in that case? Is, is the, um, the route almost like an asset? Publish, you publish a route feed, or activity basically depending on, so if you're cycling, it pulls same route used for walking, walking etc. Et yeah. So if you have to what type of activity may be used. Obviously those routes may have a you know, shape attached to them. But it's like a reference so rather than publishing a route every time it publishes an activity, it's just got you know, ten routes that it feels like the geo shape's more like the geoshape route is more like a facility and the thing we're talking about are more like sessions that run at that facility almost. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, okay, I'm a bit wary about using kind of the, the, the kind of session type thing because it, to me that's, that's a separate thing, like agreeing that we're going to turn up at 6 p.m. to all cycle. Oh, maybe absolutely, to yeah. is a separate. I'm just saying, an analogous, you might you've got a facility and then you've got a whole bunch of sessions that might be at that facility. 
you've got uh, the geoshape root and then you've got a bunch of potential different uses usages of that the running the cycling the wheelchair potentially something like um, canal authority they might publish their routes and then and the running club might publish things on top of that for all of their recommended things basically basing on top of someone else's raw geo shape feed here's all the interesting stuff that we found and think you should be doing with it right yeah so it's like a root use rather than a root or something yeah yeah it feels to me like root is at least outside of if, you, if you're not solely looking at uh, activity providers if you're looking at wayfinding root has a a, a meaning that's uh, a lot more uh, specific than this it feels like we do need to um do need to, that roots would need some qualification as you say like a root use is my my gut feel um otherwise you know the natural language way of reading it is okay well that's a set of gps points i can grab oh what what's this other data doing dangling off it mm. okay mm. okay um I was going to uh, uh, also talk about the more complex use cases, but before I mo move, more, move on to that, um, do we think uh, we've covered the kind of the core metadata that we want to associate with a root use? So, uh, you know, title, description, images, categories, level, activity, we've got geo shape, um, starting point. What other information do you think we want on there? Hi, this is Innes. I'm with David at Nordic Walking. Just one thought is facilities that might be available, um, maybe at a starting point or a longer route. So whether that's toilets, refreshments, um, wheelchair access, car parking, whatever those things might be, that would be, they'd have more significance depending upon the, the, and the type of use of the route. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, in the the data model at the moment, we call those amenities. Um, so we can we can we've got some standard ones that we've defined, um, and we can maybe extend that list to see if there's some extra ones that are suitable for uh, for these use cases. Fine. But just on the um, uh, I know B's on the call. Um, British Cycling have uh, already capture routes uh, as part of their data and. Uh, some of the other things that they capture include uh, photos of the route, which I guess would be images, what we call them, um, terrain, topography, um, and stopping points. I don't know if you had any thoughts on that, B, or? Uh, yeah, I think the, um, it was more about things like duration. You've got a question question there and I think it ties into that uh, discussion about um, how you describe uh, the difficulty um, and that's a, a consistent issue we have of even now we categorize things as steady or hard going it, it's all relative to your ability um, with this so um, I think it's right to, to kind of try and look at separating that into the, the second stage okay Okay. I'd like to um, add a quick vote for Paul's suggestion in the GitHub about is circular as a property, um, especially for uh, loops of parks and things like that. That's very useful if you want to find a 10k run and you can make it out of five loops of a 2k track. Um, that's, I think that's a useful thing to know. Okay. And, yep. and without having to go all the way into the GPS data in order to work out whether it's actually circular or not. Yeah. Mm. So, so one question I have for everyone is um, what, uh, so how are you capturing uh, or using um, that kind of trace data at the moment? Is it GPX files? Is it GeoJSON? Are, are there other spatial formats that you're using? Yeah, it's GPX for us. Right. Uh, we've got it as our own internal format, but it's GPX when it goes, comes in or goes out. Okay. GPX works fine for us too. Okay, and is that because it's just um, it's easier for people to either upload or download those to devices they're using when they're out? Yeah, uh, that's definitely the case for us. Okay. 
So it was somebody else about to speak up then. Sorry, Nick Smith, and can I just I was going to say um, I'm not sure from our point of view what Luke's um, as I think I've had conversations with Dee about this recently. I think we've taken it from a lot of other people. So I think we we need to get to a point where we're generating our own loops. So and I don't know the answer to the question. Um, it's one of my colleagues who kind of deals with the technical side of things really. Um, okay. but I think I can find that out. But just to back up what was mentioned before from um I forgot the guy's name, Lord of War thing around the amenities. I think that is really important basic information that people would look to secure before they make a decision about whether to go out. Um, but if that's accounted for um, in, in some sorts of categories then that, that, or, or in other data, um, that's fine. Okay. Uh, just one other item which I don't know um, if it would be relevant, but um, it's to, we, all of our routes are risk assessed. Um, so I don't know if there would be a requirement for people to want to, to not necessarily have have the data from the risk assessment, but to know that someone has um, checked it. Okay. Hmm. So, the, what would do you make that risk assessment data available anywhere? Is that just like a web page, or is it just like a it has been checked and it's more of a flag? Yeah. So uh, we probably could make it available as a flag. We we have got the data available, but we wouldn't necessarily want to share that uh, openly. Um, yeah. It's for admin purposes. Uh, uh, at our end. Um, yeah, triathlon have something similar with their um, approved races for for events. So they have a they have a permit permitted race, that, and and they have to get permits for all their races. So there might be some. I don't know if that's a crossover, but it might be that there's a property around level of checking that's gone on for an event or route. Possibly yeah. a, a date format is when it was last checked as well. Yeah, it feels like there's a there's a kind of there's a structured value here of um, an organisation has certified or checked a route at a particular point in time. Yeah, the, the other thing I was going to mention was duration. So I know British Cycling have two types of duration for their activities. They have the activity duration, and then they have the, the duration that uh, cycling would take. Um, I guess that's more related to the event but there's a potential here. So one of the things that's a bit, um, we don't have a solution to this yet, so there's a beta property in place for cycling, but um, if if the, the route takes you 20 minutes to cycle, you go to the pub for an hour afterwards, it's an hour and 20 minute uh, event, but a 20 minute uh, duration of activity within that event. Um, so I don't know if, if putting that duration on the route would, would help to solve it, so by saying, this route should take you 20 minutes to cycle. Um, but then on the event, you could then use that duration on the event to say, and the event is actually three hours long. Obviously there's a 20 minute cycle in there somewhere because that's the route that's attached. Um, I'm not sure if so, that might be solving something separate that doesn't need to be brought into this, but just might be an opportunity to solve it. That could very well generalize if you allow multiple routes being collected together to represent triathlons and such like having that a per route or GPX, whatever sub site, JSON location data, whatever, sub property. Well, on the duration question, because that also kicked off some discussion. Uh, it is a useful, I, I wonder whether there's a range version of that. I, 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 a couple of weeks ago, I climbed Ben Nevis and uh, on the route there, they basically say, you know, if you're doing well, you get up in three hours, if you're doing uh, at the slower end, you probably get up in five hours. And it, it is useful information just to plan your day if you know broadly where that is uh, without saying this is a 20 minute cycle, which for someone from British Cycling, as opposed to me, might be rather a, a different uh, measure. So some, some range base, what you can expect to spend on this. And that could possibly, as the providers get smarter, could actually be based on uh, a distribution based on the measurements of people actually doing this route. Okay. Okay. So I, I had another question. So, so some, just to think briefly about the, the more complex use cases. So we don't have to solve them now, but I wanted to make sure that there are the basic model will accommodate them at some point when we start to get into the detail. So um, from my understanding, some of 
some of the detail is around actually uh, segmenting or breaking up the roots to be able to set, have um, more fine-grained things to make statements about that a particular section of a root might be have a different elevation or there might be amenities at that point as opposed to for the root in general. Um, do people currently have that level of data available? Is that does that exist or is this more of a this is what we think we we need in future? For the undulation we have it implicitly based on GPX data that has elevation so but that doesn't tell us anything about terrain type and such like so we've, we've got some subset of it implicitly at the moment but it would be better in future to have a it explicitly okay and if somebody had um detailed information on like segments then i think that the way I thought we, we might allow it is you could have multiple shapes attached to a root uh, and use or root use rather might have multiple shapes to it. and as long as they you know start and end at the same point it, it kind of describes a larger geospatial object which you can attach information to does that make sense is that too reasonable I, I'm, I'm wondering, so we talked about root use. Um, I think it's a root use seems like it does definitely solve a need in terms of extra metadata and, and like you say, dangling off stuff as Chris said earlier. Um, when it comes to things like amenities, so in, in facilities, it's quite straightforward because we have a facility use which has a place and a place has amenities. And the amenities are actually property of the place and not property of the facility use itself. So property of the facility, basically. I wonder here, do we have root use, root, and the root has a geo shape, and the root also has amenities, uh, which are properties of the root rather than properties of the root use, because they'll just be there regardless. What, what value, uh, what, what does having both a root use and a root give us? But I suppose the root use is that thing where we were talking about if you've got a if you're describing uh, around a particular a root a particular GPX um, kind of the well I suppose the the yeah the um, uh, mount the, the path up the mountain or the whatever it is um, you're describing that with the root use if you're talking about a particular sport or particular activity. And you've got the description and the level and the photos and the whatever's all related to that um, because that's what you're promoting. And potentially that'll be, you know, if there'll be cycling photos, if it's a cycling route, they'll be useful on that on a cycling website. You're not going to want anyone walking on that website. Um, if that same thing's been used by England Athletics for run, uh, for running, then uh, you'd want running photos, you'd want running description, you'd want running duration, you'd want all these things we talked about. Um, the things that are common though between all those, so obviously the duration would change, the description would change, the photos would change, but the route itself would have the same distance because that's like a, you know, that's a geo property really, that's quite fundamental. It would also have the same GPX, um, but it would also have the same amenities because those amenities don't change because the route covers, covers the same ground. And so it's just whether those two things are actually, is it worth having that distinction so that we're presenting it properly? Well, I suppose it comes down to uh, uh, do uh, how are people currently handling the um, shared shared use routes? I think I'd kind of go back to the data. Um, I think we'd have to look for some examples to see if we can tease out those distinctions. Mm. So, there's one thing I've observed based on the existing data is that the way we're publishing events right now you could very well say that the amenities are a property of an event because there's very few events published at the same um, same location in some of the data that we've got where we've got amenity data as well. Um, so, but we've decided to put it into place because that's, because that's already an abstraction that exists. Um, obviously when you get different data publishers coming on who have more events at a single location, for example, 
where there are amenities are specified. Because um, at the moment, at the moment, what I'm thinking of specifically is that with the EMD data, it's all the amenities are specified in there. The individual instructors are just listing their their locations totally separately. So they're all separate location objects. They might happen to have overlapping geo, but they're not actually the same identifier. Um, so they're different actual place objects. So it's, you could say, well, you just whack it all in the event then, because that's how it's been provided. It's been provided event by event. Um, and those events have occurrences and they're in sub events. But actually we've decided to pull them out into a place because that's where kind of semantically it makes sense to put that. Um, so I guess, I guess if, if conceptually we have the same problem here, maybe it's worth having kind of two conceptual level of, levels of abstraction. Even if most people, as with events, actually just, you know, describe the location for that event because they're trying to publish the event rather than having a locations database. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I do see what you're saying. Um, um, I'm, I think what I was, was thinking of, say going back to the example of a walk up Ben Nevis, that's quite often how these things are published. So what we're saying, there's a root use, which is a walk up Ben Nevis. What's the, what do we call the root? You know, is, because you could say it's just, is it just Ben Nevis? And that there's a, well, the Ben Nevis walking trail? Yeah. Well, I guess it would be the Ben Nevis walking trail is the route. The route uses, I mean, and that's obviously you don't do many things up, up that route. Well, I suppose you might do actually, if you've got people who jog up there, maybe there's, maybe, maybe there's people that, um, or, or, um, scram, no, I suppose you wouldn't scramble with you on the same route. This is a there's thing. There, yeah. There's certainly people running it when I was there who are complete lunatics. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it, the, the, certainly that multi-use happens and I would imagine that the, you know, the, uh, the custodians of the Ben Nevis walking trail would put that there's a visitor centre at the bottom and there's no toilets at the top and things like that. And so that's an anti-amenity in fact. Um, but uh, uh, you know that, that, as I say that I can certainly see again it, I, concrete examples I, I, we're not quite there yet because people aren't people are publishing this in paper maps that are given out at the location and things like that so it's not electronic but for sure you get um walking and running routes around uh parks and uh sort of lakes and that kind of thing that are published by the people who maintain the facility the lake or the park and that's a route and they would put amenities on that and then you'd have hey here's the cycling um cycling information on top of that which might include um, you know, dangerous road crossings that happen, and, and maybe they would put that in there. Or points, pinch points where you uh, come into contact with more uh, walkers. Or mm -hmm. I think one of the suggestions was, you know, uh, disabled access and ability to get through various components of it as well, which would be another person's take on it. Yeah, it's a good point, and difficulty certainly plays into that as well. Because what might be a, a very uh, a, an easy walk up Ben Nevis would probably be quite a difficult run. I guess it depends on what. The... It's not an easy walk either, but by gum, it'd be a hard run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we are nearly at the end of our hour. Um, that was a useful discussion. I've got some good feedback to go with the comments that you've already left on the GitHub issue. Um, I think what I'll do is I will um, post a revised model, maybe just to explore what the separating out the use from the route would look like. Um, so we can provide some feedback on that. Um, does that work for everybody? Yeah, it's fine. Sounds like a good thing to me. Cool. Okay. Um, just in the last uh, minute or two, then, just before we go, um, uh, we are, I don't know how many of you are look at, have been looking at the, the data uh, that have been published already, but um, one of the things that we're trying to do is to um, improve the quality of the data that's there and provide a bit more support to um, new data publishers. So we're in the middle of building a, a data validation tool, um, which is at a public URL. Um, uh, we'd really like you to go and try it out. 
um, and give us some feedback on the just the user interface, um, the um, the functionality there, just to see whether it, it works for you. Um, we are building this um, against the draft 2.0 data model, so it's it's a bit stricter and, and some slightly different uh, information in there than um, the 1.1 spec. Um, but the root proposal will start getting built into there um, once we've um, had a, had another round of review on it. So we'll be able to use this to um, uh, start to kind of uh, explore this in a bit more detail. Um, so the URLs on slide, I'll follow up after the call to make sure that you've got uh, links to it. Um, there is a, it's a, all open source on GitHub, so you can just go and uh, file your feedback uh, on there um, if you have any. Um, so I think I'm going to uh, wind up the call there. There's some other things that, um, that we need to have a discussion about around the 2.0 spec, but um, I'm going to uh, do that on, on I'm going to follow up on GitHub and on the, the main list uh, for that. So, so again, go back to my intro. If you're not on the, um, the, the W3C community group mailing list, then I'd recommend that you sign up for that. Um, is where I, uh, we are announcing uh, new proposals and uh, new versions of the specification that we need um, need feedback on. So it's a great way to stay on top of what we're doing. Okay. Okay. Um, so unless uh, anyone has any other things that they want to to mention, then I'm going to wind up the call um, and just thank you all for coming along today. Cheers. No, thanks very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Bye. Thanks, Lee.